Okay. Well, that first one I gave you was a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> the one I bought the horse barn. Yeah, you know, that was, it, was yeah. it wasn't totally vacant. It had a barn on it. Okay. But, um, you know, we, we had one recently that we purchased in uh, California that was a slow payer. Okay. But uh, anyway, they, we, we would call, make collection calls and they finally got mad and just said they were going to pay us off. And we said, please don't throw us in a briar patch, but they went in and paid us off to teach us a lesson. So that one was, if I remember correctly, it was like a hundred thousand dollar note, which we bought for pretty, pretty sizable discount. And they paid us off at the full face amount. So what's we, the typical interest rate on these? Uh, they can vary. You know, we see it's, you know, so we see notes that you know two percent we see some that are 10 11 or 12. Uh, the one thing you have to be careful is if it's very high to make sure it's not usurious or doesn't you know um, break some type of law or you know usury law yep. or state or federal uh, so, whatever so that it sounds like so far everything is pretty much the same as a regular note that we're used to with with property attached to it uh, like a house on there, but on a, in the case of a vacant property, like a vacant land, how do you, how do you evaluate that? How do you decide what the value is in case of, you know, default and you need to take it back? How do you say, you know, it's worth X amount and we're comfortable taking on this risk? We, we have a kind of a, I'd say a corral of realtors around the country. We find most of our realtors from a website called the REO Network. And we find, you know, most of the agents there are, are good. If we call, we don't like the one we first one we get, we call the next one because there's usually a list if you put a zip code in. Mm-hmm. And we, we found some really good agents and we have a list in most areas. And we use agents to go out, you know, if it's in, say, for example, South Carolina, I can't drive down there. So we use the agents as our eyes and ears and we get BPOs, you know, and um, like uh, Dave was saying earlier, sometimes you don't get a lot of information. So you have to dig deeper. You know, if it's just a parcel number, uh, some are out in the rural areas and don't even have a 911 address yet. So you have to be really diligent about trying to establish what you have. And those may get discounted more because they're, they're you know, it may be a long time before anything's done on it. You know, they may have bought it just for hunting land or, you know, hoping that uh, the future will bring something there. Some people buy, <clears throat> you know, land, owner finance it, sell the timber off and, uh, you know, end up getting enough money off the timber to pay pretty much the note off, you know. Or, uh, there's lots of uh, value that you can kind of like air rights, timber rights, mineral rights. Yeah, we're going to get into like all these due diligence steps. Nathan, I posted in our chat before earlier, and we're, we're going to talk about it in a few minutes, but the due diligence steps is, I think, the biggest difference, right? Yeah. And for us, we just value a property, 3-2 versus a 3-2 bedroom mm-hmm. in a certain distance based on population. We, we can compare it, but land seems to have a whole different spin on due diligence stuff. Um, for example, that that one that I talked about where I ended up taking, taking the, it was a piece of land. Initially we thought it was going to be worth a lot because uh, lots in the area were, were selling for quite a high amount. What we found out was there was some kind of issue and I forget exactly what it was, but there was some kind of issue that made, that made it nearly impossible to build anything on that lot. And so then that our value went from, I think we, we thought it was going to be like 75,000 and went down to about 35,000. Yeah. Uh, and so, but you know, I didn't know, I have no idea what I'm looking at. I don't know how to tell if it's buildable land or not buildable land, or, or how do you, how do you find that kind of thing out? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, one, you, you know, let me just give you a few things to watch for. One is it in a flood zone, you know, is it flood way flood zone? What, you know, you can do, you can find that out pretty easy. That's something a realtor can help you with. And you also can do that by doing uh, a flood cert, um, even to a credit bureau um you know another thing is there any hazardous waste issues you know um you know is it in a wetland you know there's there's things to look for like that um and you know also is there access you know access is another big is it landlocked or is there good access is the road 
all washed out. It's a private road with a private road maintenance agreement, you know, that has to, that nobody's really maintaining, you know, or does it have an active HOA? We brought some lots in North Carolina and it had a lot of uh, HOA fees, but no one was taking care of the roads. You know, they were, the mm -hmm. money was not being appropriated properly. But um, so access is, is a big, big one to watch for, I think. But if you, you know, with the risk, you know, maybe comes a reward if you uh, if you buy a lot that has <clears throat> you know not the greatest access you may get a bigger discount that makes it worth the risk you know it's, does it does it, it is it an advantage if the lot is cleared well it is unless you're selling the timber you know but uh, normally it's if you're gonna if someone's looking to put a home there or a, uh, a mobile home yes you know it, it's definitely uh, is better if it's clear, not totally, you know, just clear cut, but if there's some scattered trees, but you know, they've it's manicured and and gotcha. brush hogged and you know the, the all the underbrush cut, you know, then I would say yes. You know, if you're looking for a place to hunt deer or you know, some type of animals, then you know the but it all depends on the plan, you know, the planned use of it. No, I know we talked before about environmental. Um, mm -hmm. And I made this mistake on a commercial building, and I didn't get a um, phase one. Phase one, thank you. And do you guys pull phase one on your land, vacant land, or do you not bother? I've never actually done one that I can remember, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't, particularly if you're dealing with commercial land, you know. And mm -hmm. if there's, you know, if there's been a dry cleaners there, a gas station, uh, mechanic shop, you know, uh, there can be issues with old tanks. There can be, there's, I can't even pronounce it, but there's a chemical that dry cleaners produce that yep. is very toxic. And uh, you have to be careful about if there's been a dry cleaner. And yeah. then that's where before you want to Three owners ago was dry cleaning and the owner before us was, uh, was a daycare center. So we didn't know. Anyway, yes, you bad know. situation stuff. So we're working so I, I think. Now. Sorry, excuse me. That's okay. I, I think that's where um, a realtor can help too. You know, if you if you're looking at say if I'm here in Arkansas, and I'm looking at something in South Texas, and it's a commercial land, and or somewhere in a, potentially could be commercial, and there's been buildings there before. The agent will probably know that and be able to help to you know say hey this this could possibly have some environmental issues. Then we might need to get a phase one and even a phase two if it goes you know, if the phase one shows there could potentially be something there. So I think for me, one of the other things that kind of scares me off is, is um, my concern is that if I end up taking back the property, the, the yeah. saleability of that is going to be difficult. Like it's going to be difficult for me to be able to resell that piece of land. Is that valid or am I just getting worried about nothing? Um. Well, a lot of it depends on the market. You know, the market we were in last for a couple of years there, you could sell anything, you know, that was, you know, there, you know, that it was holding yeah. the earth together. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> it, you know, it's, it's a little harder sometimes to sell land, you know, unless if you, you usually have to offer terms, but, but not always. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's one of the concerns why you want to have a better loan to value. And if things okay. kind of go south like they did in 2008, then you know land values can really drop. You know, we we saw some property out west that we bought for hundred thousand, and the tax value on it was two point six million. And wow. uh, we we bought the land, not the notes. This yeah. was some REOs that we bought, and uh, we ended up selling it. For, we made a good profit on it, but we also made money because we got the taxes reevaluated, and we got some retroactive tax money that had been paid. Um, oh, by doing cool. appraisals and some stuff that uh, nice. we got, I think it was like twenty three thousand reimbursed from the state. So right now, what are you guys yeah. targeting for your LTVs? What are your targeting? What are you kind of what LTV are you guys targeting in land notes right now? Uh, excuse me, sorry, man. That's okay. What kind of LTV are you guys targeting right now? Um, we like to stay fifty to sixty percent investment to value you know loan to value is what you know how much equity they have investment yeah. to value is how much you put in so we like to stay at you know 
50 to 60%. You know, they may only have 20% loan to value, but we can discount it to 60 or 50%. And that's, that's why it's hard to determine a yield because, yield because uh, you know, with land investment to value is, you know, Trump's yield. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, in order to get to the, where we're comfort, comfortable, we have to discount it considerably more. And sometimes a partial works bet, you know, we'll work it with that because you get your investment uh, value and it doesn't just kill the, the sale. You know, you can sure. buy a certain number of payments and, you know, after they've established a pay history with you for a year or two, then you can go back and buy some more. And I know a partial is probably a different, hmm. different seminar or webinar. We had a question, we had a question from Mark. Um, I'm not sure if you've bought notes on brick and mortar real estate before, but and I presume you have. But do you is the default rate on vacant land higher or lower than on traditional real estate? 